Hello and welcome to Reroll, my name is Angus Morrison, today wading into the murky swamp of gender issues in gaming. I may be gone some time. Uh, this is a persistent problem which continues to fixate game journos, and it's especially relevant in the wake of Remember Me, which was released in America on the 3rd and the EU on the 7th of June 2013, a review of which I shall link in the description. But I'll come to that. First off though, it is no secret that gaming suffers from, and has always suffered from, significant gender imbalances which are, on occasion, swept under the rug. For example, when trying to convince a skeptic that the hobby is honestly mainstream, it's very easy for one to start quoting facts such as, 48% of gamers are now women. Well, yes, technically, but that's including the stats from the mobile and social markets which are largely skewed towards a female audience. Which should be fine. I mean, mobile and social games, like them or hate them, are as much a part of gaming as the roided up military brochures regularly popped out by Infinity Ward. Or rather, they would be if the core casual division wasn't self consciously maintained by devs, publishers, and gamers alike. Games branded core as a matter of course, the products we declare to represent the real business of gaming command very different audiences to the industry taken as a whole. Even if we look at something like this YouTube channel, Reroll does not intentionally target a specific audience. I review those releases which the industry has declared to be important and follow them up with a piece of commentary like this one. Nevertheless, and despite the admittedly small sample size, the bias in my demographic data is astounding at 94.2% male to 5.8% female, um, of which 2.9% are in the 45 to 54 range range, which, um, I could not have called. Hmm. I mean, this channel is a real sausage fest. But this is the case the internet over, and in the industry itself. To quote more stats at you, the role in which women are best represented in the industry is producer, clocking in at around 23% female, all the way down to 4% as audio developers. E. But what's my point? This wasn't something I had perceived to be a problem in itself. It was an issue that everyone is well aware of, and the press is awash with people throwing out phrases like, the industry is maturing. With gaming growing out of its puerile obsession with naked ladies and increasing experimentation with new genres, mainly among indie developers, I uh, rather naively assumed that gender balance was something that might passively write itself. As gaming becomes ever more integrated with mainstream media and COD culture garners ever more disdain, what grounds could there be to lay claims of inequality at the industry's feet? And then the Remember Me story broke. Uh, for those of you who are unaware of the controversy surrounding Remember Me, I will include links in the description. But in short, its creative director, Jean-Maxime Maury, went on record with Penny Arcade to say that the game had been passed over by a number of publishers because the lead character was a woman. Publishers who claim that you can't have a female character in games, it has to be a male character, simple as that. Wow. Really, guys? Really? I mean, this isn't just a confirmation of a bias we already knew existed, it's the claim that the growth of gaming into a fully functional arm of the media is being stunted from the top down, from the level of the publisher. Spectacular. It is, of course, a phenomenon driven by marketing concerns, but ill-founded ones, a hangover from gaming's earlier adolescent male-driven years. The stats show that games with a female lead sell 75% worse than male-led games, but considering that the former group have on average a 40% smaller marketing budget, the disparity is not so obvious. Now, it can't all be put down to the marketing. A male-dominated marketplace will inevitably lead to some preference for male characters, but by refusing full stop to publish a game with a female lead, it's not even shooting ourselves in the foot. It's like amputating our collective leg and going at it with a minigun. I mean, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy. If female leads are treated as second-rate by the goddamn publisher, how can they ever be expected to gain traction in the market? Similarly, if the prospective female gamer is never offered so much as the choice to play as a woman, how can they be expected to engage with an industry in which they are willfully ignored? When given equal access to a marketing budget the size of the sun, it's quite obvious that a game with a woman at the helm can do very well indeed. Take, for example, Tomb Raider, released worldwide on the 5th of March 2013, selling 1 million copies in its first 48 hours, and in fact becoming the biggest UK launch title of the year so far. 
Ah, I hear you say, but Tomb Raider is not a fair bar to judge by. Lara Croft is a sex icon, of course it's sold. You know, I'm not sure I agree. Or rather, I do agree, but that's no longer what developers are setting out to create. In the 90s, certainly, polygonal sex appeal was how Tomb Raider sold, but everyone has grown up and triangles have become anatomically feasible breasts, and Lara looks less like she's buried her face in the makeup box. Ah, you say again. But no real woman looks like that. If she actually spent her days scaling mountains with an ice pick and bringing down foes with a bow, she'd have a chest like an athlete and arms like a bear. Well, yes. But no one wants to play as a real person. I mean, perhaps that sounds shallow, but 2013's Lara Croft is attractive not because the market is exclusively sweaty boys nursing erections in their bedrooms, but because a chubby, acne-scarred individual, maybe in need of some dentistry, well, they'd make a crap heroine. Nobody, and I mean nobody, male, female, or the people in between, plays games to be average. When I log on to Batman, for example, I do not do so to recreate what the average Joe would look like in tights, but rather to experience what it would be like to beat the crap out of villains with my fists at the height of physical and mental perfection. Games do not often set out to mirror mundane reality and all its flaws, and a preference for the attractive over the average is, well, part of being human? To remove all hint of sex appeal from games, movies, TV, it would be to replace every lead character in recent history with the cast of Thomas Was Alone, though careful you don't get too excited at their angular physique. I'm not denying that the games industry does its fair share of gratuitous objectification, but on that front it is improving in leaps and bounds. The collective outcry against the collect's edition of Dead Island Riptide, it's... Google it if you have to know, was something wonderful to behold. My rather lengthy point here is that the inherent sex appeal of a female lead is not an argument which devalues the impressive sales of games such as Tomb Raider, and that the real issue of women in gaming is rather more severe. There is ample proof that given the chance to build a following and handed a marketing budget on par with a male-led game, that games boasting heroines over heroes can sell very well indeed. And yet this isn't allowed to happen. And I have no clever closing statement, no specific solution to this particular problem. I only wish to convey my utter dismay at the finding that the great male hegemony over gaming is consciously maintained by the very publishers who should be striving for new audiences. Quite how the industry can be expected to welcome new minds and develop in new directions under such conditions is, quite frankly, beyond me. I would very much like to hear your thoughts on the matter, so please do leave a comment below, particularly if you're in that 5.8% of my viewership for whom publishers do not much care. Uh, share and subscribe if you're feeling benevolent, and I will see you next time.